We are live. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in. This is the Ask Junior portion of the show uh, for the Dale Junior Download, and we're thankful for all your support of all of our social media handles and obviously following us here at YouTube and, and watching all the great stuff we're creating. Um, hope you're having a great day and a great week. Uh, Andrew is here. He's got your questions from uh, Xfinity Racing uh, on Twitter. And let's get going. Yeah, this first question is from Anna. She saw that you were at an antique market, I yeah. guess, or last week. Yeah. Did you get anything good from there? A couple of records. Um, nice. It's funny, man. I went in there. I was a little hungover. <laughs> and uh, so you walk into uh, uh, you, an antique market, man. This is the indoors. Uh, they got all you know, the squares for the for the for each little store or maybe the, you know a little roughly the size of this table, maybe twice the size of this table. There's hundreds of them in this building. This is an old mill, uh, the Burlington factory in Mooresville. I think that was the Burlington factory. But <clears throat> they, it's this giant, you know, like a size of a Walmart, and it's just full of these little stores. And every store has something different. There's a lot of diecast. There's a lot huh. of records, uh, but there's also a lot of knick-knack home stuff, right? Old country sort of um, pieces that you might repurpose and use for decorations and knickknacks around your house. I don't know. But uh, Amy was looking for a couple of old doorknobs for the Western town. And I was just kind of, uh, she just asked me if I wanted to go. And I was like, hell yeah. My wife asked me to go somewhere. Let's go. <laughs> I'm riding with you. And I don't have to work out or do anything like core class or, yeah. or <laughs> freezing <laughs> chambers. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so we went and yeah, I've been kind of working on this little record collection I've been talking about. But uh, I was walking around in there, and I was like, oh, first thing I saw, first store with records. I was like, oh, these are cool. Oh, Boz Skaggs. I got to get this Boz, Boz Skaggs records good. I'll get that one. Um, and so uh, bought a couple records. But as, you know, kind of hung over a little bit. And so I got like 20 minutes into walking around and following Amy, looking for these doorknobs. Uh, and I'm thinking, damn, I don't really want these records. I could probably, <laughs> you know, I could, I don't really know if I want to buy these records. They're only like five bucks a piece, but, um, I was just thinking, man, I'm carrying these things around. Do I really want these. But then I was so far from that other booth that I couldn't, I was like, I ain't going to go over there and put them back. Right. <laughs> right. It's convenient. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> convenient. I'm not going to stick them in this other guy's booth. Wow. Uh, cause there's, and there's so many, cause when I got to walking around, I was like, well, damn, there's records everywhere. Right now, I'm like thumbing through all of it. I'm like, ah, I'm getting down this rabbit hole. I'm going to walk out of here with like an arm full of records. And then it got really good when I we get toward the door to leave, and there's these uh, booths with all of the retro toys. Oh, man, I could have stood there for another hour. <laughs> I was, I had like a second burst of energy. And I'm standing there looking at all of these toys. So, like, the original Rock'em Sock'em. Uh, you know, the the football games with the metal, uh, the vibrating football games where the player's, like, shaking around on the on the little metal. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Of course, Andrew's the looking at me. I might, no I might Andrew's not looking know at me what you're like, talking about. <laughs> no, yeah. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, these are, like, 1970s toys, right? Or, or even earlier, but I remember them. I played with them. So, they had those in the box. And it's like, yeah, it's missing this piece or missing that piece. But for the most part, I mean, this stuff is like marked 200, 600 bucks. Whoa. Oh, geez. What? Yes. Wow. Yes. It was like, there was some high prices. And so, but which, I mean, you're looking at it and you're like, okay, vibrating football game, both teams, everything's there, all the toys, all the parts, 600 bucks. I mean, I don't know. Somebody will buy that. But uh, anyways, the, the, this, this, these little booths were full of, of toys and you're like I remember that I remember that I remember them I remember that they had the uh, WWF wrestling ring yeah with the, with like, the Hulk Hogan yep and uh, I, dude I had that ring and I had at least sixteen wrestlers I mean they made right. them all right junkyard dog yeah. yep. I remember my Rowdy Roddy Piper like uh, the color his peeling off his shirt and stuff I just remember that for <laughs> whatever reason right his shirt the white it anyways so. Uh, <laughs> What other toy? Oh, they had so many toys. They had this. Uh, they had these. These. They had these two cars that uh, you you could you could run them into each other and the parts would fly off. And 
and it had a little T-handle that had gears on it. <clears throat> you'd drive that T-handle down through the cars, and you'd pull it out, and the cars would run, and you'd set them on the floor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Run them into each other. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. There, I had a there. motorcycle that did that. Yeah, like the Evil Knievel had right. the same sort That's of right. T-handle gear thing. And so all of them are like missing T-handles. Oh, so, well, but anyway, deal breaker. Yeah, but it's like. <laughs> they had G.I. Joe's? Oh, yeah. Peace oh, yeah. Of course they had those. I and uh, baseball cards, man. I was, oh, yeah. I was like, oh man. I was look, okay. Where's the, where's the most expensive ones? What is, what do we have here? Mm-hmm. And then they had uh, unopened boxes of 1987 tops, and you're like, hey, there's gum in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, all of these unopened boxes, and you're like, don't you remember? Oh, you don't remember. No, I you do. remember like I, it's getting me. an unopened box of like yeah. ninety Fleer or ninety you know or eighty seven tops and just or eighty three tops and just like what's in there? every pack? Every pack, yeah. And, and now you, and you get that one guy in every pack, right? Barry like, Bonds, right? Well, now I would have loved it to have been Barry Bonds. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like it was like I got a lot of eighty seven uh, tops cards. I got a bunch. Is that of the wood grain? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was for whatever reason. I uh, there was a lot of those for sale when I was collecting and then there was a bunch at this market and uh but I mean okay the, the, I'm sitting there looking at it I'm like okay if you bought that box would you open it do you leave it unopened this is the part that was always the dilemma about being a baseball card collector and why I couldn't ever the do answer, it I would always want to I would want to open it right. but you're not supposed to no the ans- well the answer you know in 1992 when I was in school school collecting this stuff uh would be yeah you're gonna open of course it, find out what's in there but right. now all these years later would you just leave that box sealed the no. value goes down if you're trying to sell, resell it you don't open it but hmm. anyways that's fun the car, the gum the gum if, the, if you thought it was like chewing cardboard back then hey. well, imagine what it would be like so, today <laughs> yeah so i used to collect baseball cards uh when i was 16 17 when i was finishing up high school <clears throat> And so that was probably ninety one, ninety two, and I was eating the gum out of the yeah. out of the eighty seven boxes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Me and you both. It had this weird transition of, okay, stick of gum, turns into powder, and then back into gum somehow. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But it had this weird moment where it was powder f- for a little bit. Yep. Very powdery. And then back to gum. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't care. <laughs> You know, it says it's 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 coated with asbestos. Don't care. I'm gonna chew it. <laughs> Barry Bonds. Yeah, that's right. I'll have to go find some and try some yeah. just so I can relate. Yeah. Uh, this next question coming from Nick. He actually, this is a multiple choice. Uh, you must choose one job. You start tomorrow. Either elementary school teacher, doctor slash nurse, architect, or accountant. God. Whew. <laughs> All right, not doctor nurse. So what's the other? What's left? Uh, elementary school teacher, architect, or accountant. Accountant sounds terrible. A lot of numbers involved. <laughs> right? It's definitely in between yeah. elementary school teacher <laughs> and architect. Architect, probably architect. I mean, I took drafting class, um, so I'm pretty much an architect. Be an architect yeah. at, at racetracks. I drew. I used to draw race cars All right. as a kid, so yeah, I'm cr- I'm highly qualified as an. Architect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much. Yeah, I'm pretty much has his degree. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to tell people I was an architect. Um, what would it be building? Huh? What if Mike was an architect? Wrong answers. Wrong only. answers only. What does he build? <laughs> uh, the plumbing and empty each building. Uh, plumbing pipes. Like yeah. a. Fun center. Deer stand. Yeah. <laughs> fun center. Builds a Mike fun, is a deer Mike stand. builds a fun center. <laughs> fun center. Yeah, you know, kind of like those big trampoline and kid places where the kids are. It's trampolines and and uh, swings and all kinds. It's all. What is these places? I don't know. It sounds amazing. Have you? There's <laughs> one in Mooresville. Park. Huh? Like a trampoline park? Kind or something of, but like they that? have it's it's they have more than just trampolines. They have like these big pits you can jump into. Foam yeah. Pits. It's, it's like and uh, swings and yeah. and and zip lines and. Like where was this when I was a kid? My kids are you know you take and and you go in there and they give you these special socks to yeah, put on with the yeah, grippies. Yeah. And there's like kids everywhere of all ages. <laughs> there's like even 2-year-olds running around you're like, "Whoa, hey, this is a little <laughs> dangerous." <clears throat> no? 
No, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I take taking my, kid my kids to them. <laughs> yes, I know. What I don't know the answer to where were those when you were a I kid. Take my, I, they weren't around. No, like, you didn't have them either. No, we went to roller skate. That's we what we did, roller, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that and laser tag. Remember laser tag? Yeah. 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 Why did those go away? They no, were, I they think were they're gr- still around. They're still around? Yeah. Yeah. You sure? I don't know. He's I feel right. like I've been I, to laser I, tag I, been, recently. In the last five years, I went to a one of those you know arcades with the, all that stuff. They did have a laser tag. Laser room. tag yeah. was was fun. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Uh, we got time for one more. This one comes from Andy. Obviously, yesterday was September 11th. There are a lot of stories that I, I read on Twitter, and obviously the comeback, the, the first race back being at Dover, you won that. Do you remember the emotions of that race, especially afterwards? Um, well, <clears throat> yeah, I was just... Uh... I, sh- I was just uh, put a picture of uh, us in Victory Lane in um I put a picture of us in Victory Lane on my Instagram story and I was just looking at that photo going man Victory Lanes were something back then cuz we're sh- I'm standing on the roof of the car <laughs> which you'd never do today right and and not that we did it a lot back then but I'm standing up on the roof of the car just upright as hell with a volleyball in one hand and a beer in another <laughs> and a big giant America flag behind me stuck in the, in, in the adjustment, in the jack post adjustment of the, of the car. And, um, there's like little, the little American flags, which everyone had in their hand at the start of that race laying here and there, right. Mm-hmm. Um, on the car and so forth, the team and everybody around. I mean, it's just a cool photo. Um, <clears throat> I'll, to uh, I uh, we everyone I don't know none of us knew what to do when all that happened and how to get back right and everything you know everybody took us everybody just said full stop we need this we need to we need to think this through <clears throat> nothing's really that important right now and so um, but eventually right you gotta you gotta find your way back to to some normalcy. I think everybody at some point after you stop and reflect and sort of take account of what's going on, you everybody does want things to, you know, to every, everybody does have to go back to work, go back to life, go back to being a parent or whatever it is, right? Go back to racing. <clears throat> and so um, you were a bit apprehensive about how to do that. Um, going to the racetrack, it's super quiet in the pits and the garage on Friday. Um, everybody was just not, not sure how to respond or be. Um, but I'm telling you, man, when we got to the pre-race, uh, before, like during, as the anthem's about to happen and the anthem does happen, um, I'll never forget the feeling of, uh, patriotism and and just all it was there's these moments when you're in a place where everyone in there there's where there's there, there'll be these moments in your life where you go somewhere where there's thousands of people and everyone is on the same page yeah everyone is like-minded like a lot of times you go to sporting events and there's the home team and the away team and you know, someone's going to be happy and someone will be disappointed. But there's in certain moments in life where you'll go somewhere where everyone's on the same page. And that was that that was the way that was. It's just a really great feeling. Um, and so as the you know, we get the race going, cars great. And you when you when we win the race, um, I don't know, we all were like, OK, yeah, you know, we're we're going to we're uh you know, we're going to, this, this felt right. This felt good, you know, cause you didn't know when you got back to racing and got back to doing what it was going to be like, what it was going to feel like, what is it going to matter? Were you going to care about it the same? Um, and so it was, uh, I felt too, I tell, I say this, I felt so lucky to be the one that won mm. Yeah. in that, in that moment. Cause I knew that no matter who won, they were going to honor the country and honor the moment the best they could in their own way and we didn't have a plan because we didn't we don't we don't go you know you're you're a bit superstitious in the way of like i'm not going to 
I'm not going to have, uh, you know, this plan when I win this race because that, you know, we just weren't like that. Um, but we win the race, and I'm going to I'm gonna do a donut best I can on the banking of the front straightaway without sliding down into the inside wall. Joey, who is, uh, was working w- with our team at the time and is currently my pilot, he was Brad Kozlowski's pilot several years ago. He's Brad's spotter for several years. He worked with my dad as a pilot and a spotter. Um, he's been around forever. He comes running. He comes jumping across pit road and, and comes out there and meets me at the car with the flag. That was just spon- spontaneous. I, I, had, I just kind of, you know, they're talking to me over the radio that it's coming. And so I'm like, okay. Um, and then I'm like, oh, I got to make sure that this – does it touch the ground, right? Yeah. It's, uh, so when you're the one thing I'll say, uh, uh, we're getting in the weeds a little bit, but I've uh, when you put a flag in the car, a big flag of any kind, and you start moving, that thing is trying to exit the vehicle, <laughs> right? It yeah. is. There's no mount or anything, right, for it, and you can't. It can, you know, the flagpole can kind of shift an angle in that in the in the in the door bars and whatever, and if you're not careful, it can end up on the ground. And so I knew um, that that was un. un uh, you know, something I needed to avoid in that specific moment. Um, so I'm making sure I've got that thing wedged in there good and I'm not going to go too fast. Um, but, uh, you know, we go to victory lane, uh, co- co- coincidentally, that was the volleyball, uh, castaway. Mm. Uh, so I told Tony, we were racing at Darlington and I had a really bad, um, Mike's going to get the volleyball. Um, we were racing at Darlington or somewhere, and this is it. Dover 2001. This also uh, was in the car at Talladega. Huh. Yeah. Um, anyways, this is the volleyball. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> Castaway is a big movie. I thought Castaway was great. I'm so fascinated. I know we're going long here, but <laughs> I'm so fascinated by um by what 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 ha, you know be, castaway stories anybody lost at sea it's fascinating right to be found and, and rescued um so of course i like that movie i would tell <laughs> i told tony jr at tarlington or somewhere race and i said i was getting annoyed at tony jr he wasn't talking to me i was like telling him about the car and he's not responding he's he's writing it down or talking to the other crew members about adjustments he wants to make but i wanted him to go i hear you and he wouldn't and i said damn it man just tell me 10 4. All I need you to do mm-hmm. is acknowledge that you heard me. It pisses me off when you don't. I feel like I'm on an island. I'm all by myself out here, like a castaway. And so <clears throat> I get in the car for that race at Dover. And we're, it's a 500 mile race, I believe. Might be a 400 miler. I think it was a 400 miler. I think it was. 400 laps. Yeah. I'm halfway through the race, at least 150 laps in. And. I said something over the radio, and Tony Jr. goes, well, why don't you ask Wilson? I asked some question or said something, and he goes, why don't you just ask Wilson? And I was like, what in the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, that's what the first thought in my mind was like, what is he talking about? That's weird. And I, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, look over. Do you not see it? And I did not see it. They had this volleyball tie wrapped in the car right next to me. <laughs> it had been there when I got in. I never saw it. And so this thing was tie wrapped over in the passenger seat, right next to the damn seat, and uh, <clears throat> I could have touched it. And uh, but I never saw it. Got in the car, buckled in, started the race, ran 150 laps, and had no clue it was in there. And I look over and I'm like, "Damn, what'd y'all put that in there for?" And he goes, "Oh well, you told us you was out on the island. We figured we'd give you some friends." <laughs> <laughs> and so you know he's they're making a big damn joke. And so we win the race, and, and uh, they pull it out of the car and hand it to me while it's climbed up on the roof. And I think they brought, and they must, you know, they put it in the car. They said, hey, it was such good luck. We'll keep it in the car. And so I think it rode, it's got that on their Talladega, Talladega. 2001, too. Wow. <clears throat> so. Dang. Eventually, uh, Wilson was put on the shelf. But that's the story. Anyways, man, it was this. It was a fabulous experience, you know, winning that race and and being in Victor Lane and everybody. Um, uh, finally, we were smiling and happy and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's great. It's a great memory. 
Good stuff. Yep. Lots of good stories today on Ash Jr. Yeah, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed what we had for you today. We got a great uh, great show for today. We do not cover a lot of Kansas. We cover a little bit, but we got into some personal conversations that ran long, which were a lot of fun. Um, and this week's guest is Hank Parker Sr. So Hank Parker Sr. was a Bassmaster champion, great friend of my dad's, got into racing, drove races with no experience, no reason he did not need to be doing that, but we're going to ask him why. Obviously, he's Hank Jr.'s uh, father. And me and Hank Jr. are uh, best of pals, uh, born two days apart, and Hank Jr. and I raced together. And so I've been wanting to see what Hank Sr.'s up to and finally got an opportunity where his schedule worked out to be able to come on the show tomorrow. So I can't wait to talk to him, see what he's doing. Um, <clears throat> and he's a funny dude. So looking forward to that. So anyways, enjoyed Ask Jr. Thank you, Andrew. Great questions, everybody. And we'll see you and have a great week. We're out. All right, let's uh, do the quick media break, and then we'll get Hank in here.